Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week. We're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, starting out this week, we've got some new designs from Cancept. And the first, if this looks like a Mickle Williamson design, it's because it is. This is the Helix Flipper coming in at a very reasonable 57 and some change. A lot of knife here for that kind of money. D2 steel, 3.6 inches of it, and very broad, as you can see. That D2 blade has got a lot of edge retention for that kind of money. And then that nice broad shape is gonna work really hard too. And you get a nice gray coating on here as well, since D2 is not uh, a completely stainless steel, it's kind of in that semi-stainless range. You'll get a little bit of corrosion protection from that. High flat grind too, it's gonna slice pretty nicely. There's a few different color options. You've got these two-tone handles essentially. You've got stainless steel liners with a G10 overlay. This green and gold one I think looks really good. And then you got black G10 there at the backspacer with some jimping along it as well. Gives you a good amount of grip. Speaking of good amount of grip, there's plenty there to grab onto even without using this large finger choil, which is generously sized. So even most of the, uh, the larger fingered folk out there are gonna be able to use that without getting too close to the back edge of the blade itself. As far as carry, you do have a deep carry pocket clip on the right side and the whole handle is fairly slim as well. So even though there is a lot here, a lot of knife from the side profile and indeed a lot of knife when it is folded up, it's not gonna stick out or it's not gonna bulge out too much from your pocket thanks to that construction there. And then when you're ready to open it, pull it out of the pocket, you've got ball bearings in the pivot for that excellent flipping action that you would hope for. Next up, we've got a higher end concept. This is the Delta Flipper. Uh, this one, this particular one about 192, although there is a full titanium one that's a few dollars more. Uh, and essentially with this, you've got you know another titanium frame lock flipper with a bunch of different opening mechanisms on this particular knife. It's not just a flipper or thumb studs. You've got both of those. You've also got front flipping capability as well built in. I, I can do a slow roll on that front flipper pretty well. The uh, thumb studs work nicely, but the best for me, definitely that flipper. Riding on ball bearings, of course. This is a Jelly Jerry design, who's a, it's kind of a new designer to me. But interestingly, I see a little bit of uh, kind of Jerry Hossum influence on that blade shape as well, with both the thumb ramp here and the actual shape of the edge itself. Now on the handle, the titanium is finished nicely, and we've got a blue and black carbon fiber inlay on this particular one. Milled titanium pocket clip on the back, frame lock as mentioned, and again, just another excellent flipper. As far as usability, you do have that recurve there. You're gonna get a little bit of extra edge, especially on the pull cuts. You'll be able to shear through pretty nicely. In terms of the handle itself, maybe not really a hard use handle. It's a, it's a little bit too angular for me, although if I choke back a little bit on this broad finger groove, it does feel a little bit better. But the main thing this is designed to do is to be fun to open and close and look fantastic and still cut things when you need to. Next up is another Cancept. This is a Justin Lundquist design, which you can kind of tell from the, uh, the pivot treatment here on the bolster, kind of a signature look for him. This is called the Reverie, and these start at about 185 and then go up depending on which option you're, uh, you're using. I think this particular one here comes in right under 200. Blade shape, nice, excellent, uh, long clip point, great for EDC, just under three inches, S35 VN with that high flat grind. It's just gonna have a great everyday profile. And one thing I like to, nice crown spine on there as well. Helps out not just on the leading section here when you go to choke up with a finger, but also on the thumb jimping as well. Kind of the edges are all rounded off so that it's not too bitey. This particular one has shredded carbon fiber inlays on both sides, milled titanium for the pocket clip and for security, you've got that titanium frame lock. Now, as far as opening action here, You've essentially got his little top flipper, nice and subtle, kind of rounded over, sticking just above the pivot. And you can open that two ways. You can either just do a standard finger flick like so, or if you're in to the front flipper thing, you can use your thumb like I just did as well. Both of them work pretty well for me. This particular type of design there is one that I've always found to be very useful. All right, next up, we've got a Nick Swan design. 
two different knives, but essentially the same shape. You've got, uh, let me make sure I get them right, the bevy slip joint and the wedge lock back. Like I said, same shape, same materials, just one is locking and one, you get that slip joint action. As far as the price, the slip joint is uh, 79 and the lockback is 81. So they're both $80 knives. And you've got a 154 CM blade, two and three quarters of an inch long. They're a little bit on the thicker side and you do have a high flat grind to mitigate that somewhat. Still, as far as like pure slicing ability, these are gonna be a little bit on the chunkier side, but they're gonna be very easy to use and very easy to open thanks to the dual fullers on this guy. Both, both of them are two hand opening knives. No half stop on this one. You do get a little bit of a, of a half rest area, but it's not a definitive snap and it snaps open pretty well. Red G10 on this one, of course, kind of a, uh, a three finger grip for me. Uh, a couple other materials are available, including some micartas, which you can see on the wedge lockback right here. But they're really cool little knives. They've got that kind of classic vibe, but they still feel very modern because the materials aren't like old school classic. You don't have you know, old school nickel bolsters. You do have adjustable pivots and actual screw heads rather than peened pins. Um, just a nice little shape. Uh, I think I might've said two and three quarters on the blade length earlier, but they're two and a half inches. So really nice shape, plenty of belly, awesome little slicers. Now, if you'd rather stick with an American made slip joint, we've got a few new options from Case right now. Uh, my favorite one in our most recent batch is this Copperhead. Comes with a black sycamore handle on both sides, of course. And this guy comes in about $69. The Copperhead series has always had a really nice handle shape, really nice slim carryable profile overall. Kind of a three and a half finger grip for me combined with that three inch clip point blade. This one with Case's stainless steel, which is a, a 420 variant. And it got that nice high polished finish with the hollow grind. Just all kinds of, all kinds of classic right here for sure. Closing this knife up, you do have a nice definitive half stop and a good snap closed. And I just love the grain pattern here of the black sycamore. It's very distinct. You've got very distinct striations between the blacker areas and the browner areas. Not quite like ironwood, but kind of somewhere in a similar vicinity, perhaps. Nice single layer thick, excellent feel on the open and close. Just a really cool knife. Speaking of really cool knives, I'm really liking this new Kershaw capsule, which is a Jens Anso design. It's an OTF non-automatic, comes in about $32 right now. For that, you've got a sub two inch blade, 8CR series stainless at this kind of price, but you have that nice stone washed finish. And even though it has kind of this dagger like profile, this is a single edged blade. And it's gonna be a pretty useful EDC. As far as operating the knife, you just push down on this button here because in the open position, it is locked push down, slide back, and you're ready to go. Some really nice detailing on the front too. I mean, it's a GRN handle, but you've got that steel liner essentially, and there's some nice milling work there. Nice milling work on the anodized or the blue button here as well. Has a pretty good look, especially for a budget oriented knife like this. Deep carry pocket clip, not reversible, but it's kind of a, a moot point since it's still going to be very easy to carry this and open it with the left hand. No problem. You just have to spin around before you go to use it, but it's real simple to use. It looks great. It has a nice new, you know, different kind of fidgety opening mechanism as well. Plus there is an inherent degree of safety to this design too, because it's not going to fold close on your finger. If it does happen to fail, it's just going to get pushed back into the handle and your fingers aren't going to be uh, in the way. You even got a little bit of a finger guard there while it is in the open locked position for even a little bit more protection. All right, we'll keep it going with the uh, compact stuff. This one is a bit more pricey. Uh, new Medford Chunky Monkeys are in. This guy comes in about $485. For that, your blade's a little bit over two inches. You've got S35VN. Speaking of chunky, you can see there from the, uh, the spine shot, both the blade steel and the handle itself definitely have some girth going on for sure. Blade itself, you've got that sheep's foot profile with the black coating and a real nice hollow grind. So at least right behind the edge, it is going to be a little bit slimmer despite the thickness of that spine. Handles are bronze stone washed titanium. Honestly, a pretty good feel in the hand. It's kind of a two and a half finger grip for my hands. Feels pretty solid though. I, I gotta say, I'm not sure how it would be uh, in actual use, but just holding it here at the table doesn't feel that bad. 
Nice strong frame lock going on. Nice strong pocket clip going on too with the ball bearing there. And of course, as you can see, you've got that flipper tab there, with ball bearings in the pivot. For me, at least, it requires a tiny, just the tiniest touch of wrist flick going on, just because I think my hands are maybe a little too large for this particular knife. But man, what an impressive piece. Speaking of impressive pieces, I think this one to me is even more so. New DPX design. This is new uh, one made for them in Italy by Lion Steel. This is the Harsi Demo Knife. Comes in at 375 because this is actually a collaboration between Robert Young Pelton of DPX fame and Bill Harsi of knife fame everywhere. I mean, he has so many great designs out there on the marketplace. And this is a pretty cool, uh, cool design. Bit of a departure for a lot of DPX stuff. Not least of which you can see what looks like a frame lock here on the front side. I'll get to that in a minute. The blade shape itself, I think is excellent about uh, almost four inches there about 3.8. Nice high flat grind essentially almost looks like a straight clip point, but this does have a little bit of curvature here on the front. So technically, that would be a drop point there. Of course, being a lion steel, you've got stuff like the crown spine crown sections here on the flipper as well. You've also got that strong frame locking action couple of different opening methods here as well. You've got the thumb cutout with the fuller attached to it. So you could do the thumb opening type of thing, but you could also take advantage of the ball bearings there and do the flip open too. Similar to a lot of uh, DPX designs, you've got the tail mounted pocket clip here with a tungsten carbide glass breaker installed, but you've also got a flat cap in the package. If you like, you could reverse this as well. But the kind of real defining feature the out there feature of this knife is a spine mounted spike or you know, Marlin spike or all depending on how you want to use it. It's going to work at both of those quite nicely because you do have an acute enough tip, you could certainly do the piercing stuff like an all you've even got the eyelet there. So if you're needing to do come sign up some of that improvised stitching on leather, or any other type of field expedient work, you could manage it with that. And you could use it as the Marlin spike as well to kind of untie some things too. I think the only weird part about this knife, this, this part itself is not weird. But the weird part for me is actually operating the uh, the liner or the frame lock from the backside. I guess if you're a lefty and you're used to well, if you're a lefty, it's going to be perfect, because it's gonna be set up for you already. But hardly a uh, hardly that serious of a criticism for uh, for something like this. Next up is another lion steel made DPX is the hit push dagger nice small little guy in this case comes with uh, for about 140 bucks comes with a titanium handle. You've got some machined fluting essentially on both sides, some nice comfortable edges, and a very small blade here about 1.35 inches. And it is a replaceable blade or a I don't know if they're going to sell replaceable or replacement blades for it or not. But it can be removed. It's m 390. It's chisel ground and double edged as well. So you've got a little bit of that vicious attitude. And if you need it for some uh, some day to day utility, it's not gonna be a terrible shape for that sort of thing. Either. It honestly feels pretty good in the handle or in the hand, especially for me between my uh, my index and middle fingers feels nice and secure and not too sharp, not too jabby on the handle. Because again, being a lion steel, as you'd expect, you got some nice crowned edges. As for the sheath, you got a small leather ensemble here comes set up for neck carry with some paracord and it has a nice retention strap on it as well. There we go. And what's kind of cool about the way the paracord is set up is it's adjustable in length. You can see you've got essentially two slip knots on either side. So you can change the size of the paracord loop. Pretty nice little consideration. Next up, we've got some new versions of one of our knife center exclusive RMJs, which Usually I show exclusives right at the front. So that's a bit of oversight on my part. But this is their U cap the up close and personal fixed blade. Now with kind of this, I don't know, what do we want to what do we want to call that mountain finished uh, textured blade in this case, still comes down to a nice cute edge, we've got nitro V steel here. And as you can see, got a pretty highly refined edge going on almost a mirror polish. In fact, now, as far as the uh, the textured pattern going on, it probably looks more aggressive in the camera than it actually is there's not, it's probably not going to slow you down too much if you're going through the uh, the slicing and that sort of thing, probably isn't going to get hung up too much either if you're going to use this for piercing. And in fact, it may make it easier to get out of a uh, of an object. 
Then again, I don't know, maybe it's, it might make it a little harder too. I'm not quite sure, having not really used a blade like this extensively. It looks pretty cool though, and that edge itself, like I said, is great. The knife center exclusive portion of this knife are of course those G10 handles in black and orange. You got this nice almost twisted pattern going on, not just with the, uh, the actual milling shape to the handle, but also in the way it makes the, uh, the layering of that G10 look. And in this case, I do like the, uh, the extra grip there provided by that milling, especially in a handle like this, which is maybe a little bit small for me, but my hands are slightly larger than average. For most folks out there with an average sized hand, this is gonna feel even better. The sheath is nicely done. We've got Kydex with two horizontal straps here, each with a pull the dot snap, so it's not likely to uh, come undone accidentally from your belt. And then of course, you could use your, uh, your large tech lock on this as well if you wanna take those straps off and carry it a little bit differently. But as for use of this knife, I think it would make an excellent EDC. And of course, with a name like Up Close and Personal, you, you kind of know what they're talking about as well with kind of the self-defensive capabilities. But I really like this as an EDC fixed blade, a, a slightly larger EDC fixed blade. Because again, the thickness of the spine is not super thick. It's just right. You've got a really usable profile here. Decidedly non-EDC friendly is the next fixed blade. Uh, got some new knives from my buddy TM Hunt, Todd Hunt of TM Hunt Custom Knives at the Blade Show, including some new M18s. These have been out of stock pretty much everywhere for a while. We've got a few starting at 500 for a black handle or this limited edition one here. There's a couple of these come with a red linen micarta handle. These are a little bit more about 560. Now, if you've never experienced kind of the glory of a TM Hunt M18 before, uh, we did do a, a video of this a while back of me kind of just thrashing one of these in the woods. We'll leave a link to that up above so you can see this guy in action. But there is a lot of versatility in this very crazy looking blade shape. First off, let's start with the big recurve, which is hollow ground. It works great for draw knife stuff because you've got a nice section here in front of it on the back end here that you can grab onto. Nice crown spine there. Hold there and on the handle, you've got a very secure draw knife grip going on. And then there in front of the recurve section, you've got this nice hefty convex ground section, which of course is gonna do you very well for the chopping, especially when you have a nice aggressive or a nice comfortable handle like this to back it up. You can really swing on it. As far as the shape, a lot of folks will say that, oh, they, hey, they remind me of the Becker handles out there, and they are pretty similar. It's a little bit more open here at the back. The shape is slightly different, but a couple of the early prototypes, which, uh, you know, were blessed by Ethan, they did come with Becker handles before he kind of settled on his final shape. And you definitely see a little bit of that DNA still there. Now, one of the tricks up the sleeve of these M18s, especially when you combine it with a lanyard like this, is you can thread your arm up through it Grab here near the tip, you've got jimping and a nice hanging hole here for your uh, thumb and index finger or however you wanna grip it. You can actually use this front section of edge pretty well, pretty adeptly. And when you tighten that lanyard down, pardon the, uh, the awkward angle, we'll just pretend I got it. It's gonna support the, uh, the weight of the handle there so you're not fighting it when you go to move around this leading section. And I've seen folks do skinning with this section, do smaller carving tasks when they need to, and then slip it back out. You could even use this front end for a little, little bit of chiseling action. As far as the sheaths on these knives, you've got spine draw kydex here with a, a loop to keep it extra secure. Again, pull the dot snap on this guy as well. Now, in addition to those M18s, which are 01 steel, I don't know if I mentioned, Todd is famous for his, uh, his 01 steels heat treat. We got some coal hogs and hedgehogs as well as a couple of new magwas. These guys come in about 260 right now and the handles themselves, this bullseye motif is really cool. You've got alternating black and lager colored G10, which is kind of translucent and has a really cool vibe when you put the two of them together. Again, 01 steel, full flat grind and a nice feel in the hand on these guys as well. Just an excellent utility shape overall. Now the sheaths on these guys are not kydex, but leather. And if you've never seen Todd's leather before, he does these quite well also. Nice distinctive shape going on that you're gonna find with these. Last but not least, we've got a new premium pairing knife from Shun. Uh, it is the premier pairing knife, four inches in length, coming in about 130. And a little bit wide for, uh, for a lot of pairing knives out there. 
but it will certainly do the job. It's certainly going to slice really nicely too, as you know, just a utility knife, thanks to that thin edge, a little bit of a uh, hammered texture going on here, and a VG Max core Damascus. And VG Max in this case, similar to VG10, but it's kind of an offshoot that should have a little bit better edge retention than the VG10. And when you combine that extra edge retention on that steel along with that thin blade stock and the extra sharp edge, they grind these in at a, a 16 degree bevel per side, you're really gonna be able to feel just the, the cutting efficiency that you're gonna have with this blade and steel combo. Handle itself is a gray pack of wood. You've got a nice kind of brass colored accent here at the bottom to kind of spice things up a little bit. Very comfortable feel in the hand. Pretty uh, symmetrical handle in this case. A lot of the Shun knives will have the, uh, the D-shaped handle that's biased towards a right-hand user. But in this case, this is gonna be a, a quality ambidextrous option. Feels really good and definitely gonna be a nice classy addition to your kitchen. All right, that's all I've got time to show you this week. Make sure to stick around for next week's episode for even more cool new stuff. Always let me know what you think of these knives in the comments and to get your hands on one of them yourself, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program too, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you're putting your dollars down on one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.